Um, our keynote, I'm really excited about this. I can't sit my butt long enough in front of a screen to watch um, much of anything, actually. And uh, when John was proposing that we have Tara O'Doherty from Cassette Communications as our keynote, he sent me links to some talks that she had done. And I think there were seven different ones in a row. And I went from presentation to presentation to presentation because she was saying things like, oh my God, like this makes so much sense. Like our folks really need to hear this. So Tara, I'm so excited. So we have two inspiration and we have a Tara Swigger inspiration and we have a Tara O'Doherty inspiration. So come on down, Tara. So we're here to talk about the top 10. And what I like to start off is everyone's always looking for design ideas and whatnot. I work in a design company. Uh, which makes it very challenging when you are a scientist by trade or an engineer who really studies human performance. And my forte is really converting human behavior for profit. So no matter what anyone says when they say they're trying to make an experience easier, they're making it easier to deliver upon some KPI or sales goal or communication goal. Now as we're going through the top 10, some of these things you may have heard of, some you may not. They're really focusing on what's really hot right now, what I realize people are not actually tapping into, which is great insight that you can turn into action. And it all belongs to basic human behavior. And humans do not change. We evolve, maybe physically, but there are certain traits and certain ways our brain and eyes operate that will pretty much keep us the same, no matter what device you have in front of you. And that <laughs> universal truth is people are lazy. No matter what you do, you're like, oh god, there's so many fields to fill in. Oh my god, it just wiped something out, or it asked me for my password again, it asked me for my email again. You know, it already knows this about me, I logged in. People are lazy. That's kind of the underlying truth. As we're going through this, you'll, you'll get a feel for how lazy people can be. But uh, I'm going to share with you some of the tools, I'll give you the insight to help differentiate. Which is kind of interesting, because it's a bit of a competitive market. Um, so we're going to talk about these things and these little tricks in my top 10. And keep in mind, these are the top 10 for this year. Next year it could be a whole new ball game, uh, but this year some of these truths are, um, are pretty powerful. They're built on over 200 years of science. It's not uh, just things that are just whipping out. It's a little bit about what's old is new again. So what we're going to do is we're going to throw the dice. I like to warm up the room, see exactly. <laughs> I know you're competitive, so this is going to be great. So everybody stand up. Really, you gotta stand up. We're gonna have a little contest here. And there are winners and there are losers. So let's be real. It's like gambling. So this will help me understand how much knowledge or how good you guys think you are. A little uh, morning stretch. I have two interfaces for you here. Ah, they're not shirts, but that's not the point. We're not judging them. Oh, look, you can't see me. <laughs> You're not judging them for their design. I'm just asking a simple question and I'll point out what is the difference between the two interfaces. I want to know which interface performs stronger for sales on click to action, which would be learn more. Okay, just a little example for you. On the right side we have A. You can see the bright orange learn more button uh, header. It's for a swim website. You've got some copy to the right. Same hero image. Boop. B. You've got some copy, some hero image, button on the right. That's the only difference between those two. So, simple as this. Those who think A performs stronger than B, raise your hand. Final answer, all A's sit down. B performs 35.6% better. Oh wow, we lost half the room already. Oh. Oh, it's getting harder. <laughs> this is easy. So why does it? People have fear of commitment and anxiety. You're asking me to commit more when you didn't tell me anything. Always put three benefit, boing, 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 above a call to action, drives the eye in, reinforces what you're looking for. In the first interface, I have to scan to the left to realize what the heck am I learning more about? So again, they're not great design, but that's not the point. We're looking at just the science of it. Okay, so the people remaining standing. It's a little break, it's an easy one. A, who has the longer attention?
attention span? A human at 12 seconds or a goldfish at 8 seconds? B, goldfish at 8 seconds, human at, or sorry, goldfish at 12, human at 8. Those who say A, raise your hand. Oh, you non-believers. Okay, sit down, A's. <laughs> oh, wait. A's stand up. <laughs> A's are wrong. So those who thought B was correct, you're still standing. Even I'm getting confused by my A-B. <laughs> so, what are we learning? Well, I got distracted, because humans only have an attention span of eight seconds. <laughs> Damn it. The goldfish could have paid more attention to my presentation. All right, so we've got a couple of mean ones left. Now, here's the kicker. One of the most trendy things right now, we're going to talk about social proof. All of you guys, some of you are adding really ugly like Facebook likes and all that, and that's good, and that's social proof, and we're going to cover that, what's good about it. But there are rules, yes and no, for certain things. So let's talk about the next example. Oh, wait, that's just in the intermission. It's just an animation. Let's see who's paying attention. All right. Emotions are experienced. Remember that as we're going through here. Emotions are experienced. Let's feel some emotions. Only difference on these two pages, one tiny thing. On the first one is A. It indicates the number of Twitter followers. And that would be social proof, what we call from a strategy perspective. And on B, this uh, is a trust symbol, which we would call credibility. Two different strategies for a site, homepage, uh, for some e-com. Those who think B performs better, raise your hand. Anyone else sit down who doesn't have their hand up? Because it is B. 72%. So those who remain standing, good for you. That's the end. I'm hiring. Now, the key is not to just follow these images because you can end up into trouble. But the key is to understand the strategy behind each of these. So what is the strategy? People have a fear of data, losing their privacy rights. Um, if you're gathering any information on your site, Social proof helps with credibility, but not as much as saying that your site is secure when gathering information. Canadians are very concerned about that, so anytime up front, honestly, it can be a little lock that's just an icon that says secure. It doesn't have to be fancy. I move this down a little bit. So, we're really looking at the fact that interactive and digital is not just another channel, it's a life, it's it's evolving into what's called omni-channel and customer experience. The digital hub or the website is now the data that's pushing out overall. And so data becomes knowledge, knowledge becomes power. Where do you begin? So most people, when they do their top 10, would start counting down, not Taro Doherty. She just goes number one. I'm just gonna rip the bandaid off right now because I have a short attention span too because number one will set the stage to allow you to believe me that I'm credible in what I'm talking about because I'm using Hotjar. And Hotjar is a tool uh, that is an analytical tool that I have running on a lot of my clients' websites. And it offers two things. Yes, there's Google, and I'll talk about that in a second. Hotjar, basically, you sign up for the service, it gives you a piece of code, you give the code to your dev guy, he pops it in the back end, takes all about five seconds. Then it offers two things. It has more services in there, and I'll tell you how much it costs. I don't own the company or anything. You'll, you'll, you'll just love this. It does two things. It gives heat and scroll maps, and it gives recordings. Now, before everyone jumps down my throat on recordings, because that is actually very cool, let me talk about what each of these are. So we are struggling with above the fold or below the fold. The bottom line, if people can't find your content or discover it or your links or calls to action or your testimonial, if they can't find it, it's not imprinting on them. So the first question you have to ask yourself is, are they even scrolling? So these are examples of heat maps I've taken. Look at this center tablet. So this is an example of a cassette page. And where you see the red, to the bottom line where the red is, 75% of people get there. As it goes down, it counts down. On the right, which is the long, very uh, rainbow-looking one, that's mobile. So what you can see, basically, is only 50% of the people are getting halfway to the content. 
So this is the first thing you need to know about your content. Are people interacting with it? Can they find what they're looking for? What are they really you know, doing on the site? So yes, Google does this, but this is great, a great tool. I can now identify what's scrolling and not scrolling because designers love, uh, this is a great insurance site, and I'm gonna walk you through this in a second on the left, but creatives love to create these long, long, long pages. And so we need to be careful with that. Now, don't get freaked out. It's not breaking any privacy laws. Recordings. Hotjar will randomly record user activity coming through your site in sessions and place them in a database for you to go watch. People don't opt into this. What this really is, you're watching someone interact on a website. You will see a session, it's just a person, and I can see, see how the cursor's moving. It's just an animated GIF, but see how the cursor's moving over the copy? Now I can tell people are reading my copy. The reason why this isn't illegal or people need to opt into it is it's just dropping a cookie. And these technology talk, but the guys who created this technology have figured out how to create an algorithm so it looks like a recording. It's not really recording someone's screen. It's recording where the cursor goes, taking that data and imprinting a cursor on it for you. But what this does is this is such a powerful tool. When we launched a recent campaign for sick kids, we launched, I had this running, and uh, I call Hotjar the new Netflix. So we sat there for hours just watching things, but within the first 10 minutes, we realized some huge mistakes had happened. The creative looked great. We did use the ability to test. We asked people to interact with it. But this little thing, we had the word share up at the top, and we had three icons. And God bless people, they love to click. They went up to share, and they kept clicking share when we wanted them to click the icons. So they were forever clicking and not getting anywhere. The same thing happened when I was working, I'm currently working with Hydro One, and trying to explain to them how difficult their site is, and they often don't believe you until you show a recording. And I said, I just want to show you a recording of someone logging into their site. It takes 37 seconds, and the person's like, up here, oh, I see the word my account, they click on it, oh, now it takes them to an information page, oh, he's click every time he sees the word my account, he's logged. He never finds it, basically, <laughs> and it's painful to watch. But this software, basically, is free. You can use it um, for 200 recordings, all those things. Go to hotjar.com, it's free. If you want unlimited or like 5,000 or something, I think it's $9. Like it's ridiculously cheap, do it for a month and uh, you'll be hooked. But the bottom line is, normally in the old world, like six months ago, I would have to do usability tests with 15 people one-on-one -on -one, and I would not get the level of data. I can search by page, I can look to see what my FAQs, my contact us forms look like where people are stumbling. Identify, diagnose, and eliminate is what you need to do, and Hotjar does that. So, this is why I can tell you all the little secrets I'm telling you is working, because I've got Hotjar running on everything. So let's start with the laws. We're breaking out the science 101, psychology. Hicks, Millers, and Fitz. Sounds like a law firm. Whoops, whoa, whoa. All right, on the left we have good. And I'm not just saying good because it's a great in and out menu but from in and out Burger, but I want you to understand choice. Too much choice is a bad thing. People cannot decide too much choice. Here it's pretty simple, not a lot. When I'm going over to Staples, way too much choice. They're thinking, you can just put all of our products in a menu, but how long does it take you to scan through all of that as compared to breaking it down in further chunks. So you have to ask yourself, and Hicks Law is simple, the more you offer on one page or one menu, the longer it takes people to decide. So where possible, chunk it. Miller is all about chunking it, and he's about chunking it at number seven. So Miller's Law is simple, simple, simple. In any viewport, that's a viewport. We call it a viewport when this is all you see on screen. You scroll down, that's your next viewport. Your next viewport, kind of get that. Simple, simple, no more than seven choices on the screen. They actually did this with this site and also tried to eliminate fields. So if you don't have to ask for information and your goal is to get lead generation, stop asking for 27 fields. Get the primary fields you need, create the relationship with people, create that one-on-one. -on -one. I can tell you, working with Intact and who takes the relationship with brokers is extremely serious. You know, leveraging how we do that and how we create that communication the value of the broker relationship is what? People. 
best choice, one-to-one -one relationships and helping. Whereas if I go to you know, a random site type in for like a 6,000 aggregated quote, I'm not getting that. I can't make the best choice. So narrow down your fields, get them under seven whenever possible, only ask what's required. So Fitz Law, so again, you're gonna see that example of Hicks, Choice, Miller, Seven, Fitz, make it bigger. <laughs> Fitz is kind of silly, you think. It's basically, the bigger the object, the more likely someone will click on it. The closer it is to the cursor, the more likely they'll click. That's why you see a lot of calls to action on the right. Most people are right-handed. Think about it when you land on a website and you're all on desktop, not anything else. Your cursor's lingering to the right. It's so much easier to click things than move over. That being said, you have a lot of copy. I guarantee you people are reading your copy like this. That's why hot charts great. And if they're not doing that, they're not reading your copy. So again, if it's law, keep it bigger, especially if you're doing touch interfaces or responsive design. So one of the things we we're also talking about, when you bring them all together, a couple other points that I was looking at when I was looking at some site examples. If they can't find it, and it's not where they're expecting it, most likely it's not gonna imprint on them or they're not gonna get the information. So just a couple tips. When you're doing your menus or drop downs, please try to avoid using all caps, avoid using all caps, avoid using all caps. Designers love it. You know why? Because I finally found out, I asked one of Gustav, or one of our designers, he goes, ta-da, it is symmetry, it is beauty, it is, I'm like, but people can't read all caps. People read all caps 33% slower than reading anything else. You know why? When we were kids, if you remember, they would draw on the chalkboard three lines, and you would start uh, learning how, like, your cursive. Big P, little P, big P. So the eye gets trained in shapes. You actually read shapes. You actually don't read words. So when you do all caps, make sure it's for things like little breadcrumb trails or calls to action, because it will slow people down. And definitely don't do them in drop downs. That is probably the worst. So, when we're looking at drop downs or anything, when you're content chunking, smaller is better, no more than seven, try to keep the labels intuitive. So, I always laugh when I see labels called quick links because I'm like, are there slow links? Like, I'm just wondering, like, what's in quick links? <laughs> so, let's try to avoid things like web links. I mean, is that, like, if it was a title I didn't dive in there and it had maybe great resources or blogs or things like that. Call it something to entice people. Leverage the content. Um, the other example in the lower area, when you're talking about why cheese us, great title. Benefit driven, love it. But what I wouldn't expect under there necessarily are customer reviews. Customer reviews in the insurance field are so important, I cannot even tell you. And we'll talk about the three types of testimonials that drive the most action, but don't put it as a label. Put it everywhere. Contextually, if you're gonna talk about auto insurance, there's someone talking about how great we were. Or talking about claims, here's someone talking about how great we were. People are not gonna necessarily seek out that information, but that information, which is part of social proof, is pivotal to your business. Gestalt theory. You can't uh, gestalt German, you have to have German science in these things. All about the iPad and groupings. Most people don't know this, but everything is strategic. I call it the rubbernecking theory. If you're ever driving and everyone's looking to the right, you know you're trying not to because you're supposed to look straight and you're like, oh my God, what's going on over there? You can't help but look where people are looking. So that works in imagery. So here's a couple tips when using images. Faces are important. Smiling faces are better than sad faces. Faces looking towards a call to action or where you want people to look is great because you rubberneck, even on a little lizard, you rubberneck to get a quote. So the gestalt theory is the, of a good continuation is the eye moves very quick. It understands groupings and chunks, and then it will actually scan pretty quick to where the call outs are. So pointed fingers, eyes looking in certain ways, putting bigger colors below important things will draw the eye down. It's one of the tricks we use all the time. It is a bit of a pain to try to get all the visuals, but we do know that the biggest performing things, and you see it left and right, are visuals of people straight on and smiling. Just watch when you use them, because people slow down when they look at images. So, here's an intact example. 
Now, Intact is a challenge because it's a huge website. It's a massive website that I get told two things. We want to drive online quotes. Oh, but not too much because we want to drive to our brokers. So I'm like, uh, I don't know what to do. So then it's like every region is different. So they came to me and said, we want to increase sales in out east. And I said, okay, so are we driving online? What are we doing? And we're driving to brokers. And I said, okay, so what did we try to do? Well, the old call to action box, which is here is the new one, the find a broker. What I realized is one of the top friction points, if you come to an intact site, for example, is why do I need a broker? Don't assume that people understand that. There's history out there that, and I can't explain it, I haven't studied it, but we've seen it in focus groups left and right with our clients that they feel that brokers are more expensive. And therefore, if you're price sensitive, that's a worry. But the world is changing. Price sensitivity, eh. You know, the big guys, KPMG, Deloitte, they're all pushing us to what people want is value. And if I need a claim, I want value because I don't know what to do and I would like to talk to someone about how to do this. So that is something, and then, and even if there is a claim in Texas, call your broker, so. It's kind of one of those things. So what do we do here? In one sentence, I had a bright call to action, find a broker, basically had a little information thing to talk more about the broker, but I have to come down and read the copy, my eyes aren't as good. Brokers are, here we go, licensed professionals who make it their business to help you find the right insurance solution for your needs and budget. So we tried to create a benefit statement that would drive that activity along with a big bright button that would drive people visually to it. It's a balance, it's a viewport balance. So as you're going down the page, this is one viewport, you need to have multiple calls to action. Whatever your primary objective is, lead generation, claims, call us, update your information, sign in on account, make sure it's pretty much available, especially the lead generation stuff, per viewport. Don't just put it at the top of the footer, you'll end up in trouble. Now, affordance and signifiers. This is a fancy thing to say. This is what I call the door effect. How many times have you gone to a door and it looks like pushing it? Oh, crap, it's pull. And even now, the doors are getting smarter or dumber because now there's a sticker that says pull and you still go the wrong way. We can thank this mistake to Google in particular, I'm actually blaming for this because I trailed it back, but web designers are creating these super long pages. You're getting what's called, right, a nice white spot, which is what, where the fold is or where the desktop would stop or where the mobile would stop and people are stopping because they're lazy and they're not scrolling. So we saw that on the scroll maps. So when you have that white bar, which is called basically a dead end, people stop. So what designers have done, if you've ever seen those, they're like circles or arrows and they're kind of bouncing and they're saying, something below, something below, <laughs> scroll below. <laughs> it's laziness. There are ways to solve it. Just I'll show you the false bottoms. So this is a great site, and I'm going to walk you through some of the benefits of it. It's a MetLife one. It's the one that's way too scrollable. Their content chunks are brilliant, how they put it together, not so smart. But see that little arrow up at the top? So if my fold was there, I would notice. They cut two colors, so it draws the eye. It's still lazy, it's a false bottom. Right there is where you're running into space. So if I scroll down, I could actually think that that's the bottom of the page, because I don't see below or on smartphone, and I'm like, oh, I've already scrolled like four times. I've gotten most of the info, so I'm not gonna go further. Which, in this case, is a map talking about 50,000 representatives ready to help you, which can cause problems. So things need to operate the way that they look. That's the door effect. If it looks clickable, it should be clickable. Like, watch your headers and stuff, because sometimes they look like buttons. Buttons are clickable, sometimes words aren't. So you've got to make sure you're consistent. People will think things are clickable. Now, Google introduced what's called flat design. This guy here is flat design. Flat design means there's no shadows. So Google realized that flat design, which is brilliant, because it doesn't have shadows or depth to buttons and things like that, people can do tasks faster. So that's a good news. But the problem is they took flat design to such a level, and you can see flat design here. So on the top is a button. Now look to the one below. The one below, see how it's got that rim? It actually looks like a button. That means it has good affordance. The one above, mm, not so good, but it still looks like a button. Move to the right, thank you Google, because you guys started this. 
people, again, I was watching on Hot Jar on Sick Kids, and there was only one form field on the entire page. There wasn't anything else to do. Like we, people would get their cursor and they're like, huh? And I'm like, it's an asking for your email address. They couldn't understand because it didn't look like a normal form field to them. So though it looks good, it lacks affordance. People, what is that head? Is that my email, my name? You're not sure what to do with it. And if you don't know, this is when usability trumps design 100%. You need to get through it. Don't be swayed by what's called simplicity blindness. I can show you a page that's like, it's Apple. There's only four choices on it. It's easy to be Apple, but if you have six different types of insurance, 20 types of uh, you know, insurance within those uh, product lines, don't get swayed by that information and getting to that information as quick as possible is more important than anything else. So how much more important it's not an insurance example, because people would shoot me if I shared my numbers. Oh, that intact one we did, 13% increase in sales just by changing that copy. So small changes can reap huge rewards. Never, ever, ever under underestimate that, especially in your industry. So this is a great example. They used flat design, but it's Virgin America. And so what they did is they followed all those rules I just gave you. They limited it to seven, they limited the choices, they had big calls to action, no humans, but that's all right, imagery to get through things. Within that, I'm sure it would have been higher if they had a little more depth on some of their buttons so you could tell things were selectable and non-selectable, but they had an increase of 10% in conversion rate, 20% in web-related phone calls, or decrease 20%, which we all want self-service is one of our biggest things this year. And then they've vamped up the site so it's quicker. Site time is very important. You have too many images, it slows things down. But people are willing to wait, just like I showed you that animation. Oh, okay, I'm willing to wait for Tar's next slide, because you see a bright animation. It's, it's tricking you. But in the essence of this, in your industry, speed, clear information, benefits. Call to action, benefits, call to action, benefits. That's all you've got to keep thinking about. It's storytelling. Now, Google loves videos. It really does. If you don't know a lot about SEO or whatnot, I'd be pumping every video possible in there. Video is so amazing for people. So when we talk about testimonials, video testimonials convert at such like 200% higher than your standard text with the person's first name and lives in Toronto. So video testimonials are tough to get. You can have a little mini contest, have people submit them. Um, Always ask for them under 30 seconds, let people do it, because they do it online already. They can use their cell phone and submit something for you. But people learn 65%, uh, sorry, people are, 65% of the population are visual learners. So obviously we can see visually happy people, our eyes get guided. Ex explanations are easier when someone has video over copy, especially with English as a second language in Canada. And basically the imprinting is much better. Plus for SEO, Google starts ranking you higher when you have more video original content. So it's something to consider. So that social proof thing we were talking about, it's best and it's great if you use it, but sprinkle it throughout your pages and include more than one type of social proof. So you don't wanna to go too far down the road because then it starts to look like hotels.com which uses like every single possible one of these tricks except for brand because it looks like a discount warehouse. Brand is very important. We're selling brand, we're selling relationships. So here we have our five types of social proof. Expert. In the case of my number one, which is expert, uh, in this case she's also a celebrity, so she's that fitness person, uh, Jillian something, but Jillian Michaels, I think. But here she's talking about and, and reinforcing a particular brand. So when an expert like does that, that's great, but she's also a fitness expert. So we're looking at that expert level of knowledge, just like if you had a, a doctor or someone talking about what could happen on travel insurance and why it's so important, um, do you know what an extra cost? That's more value than you yourself saying that in print. So having that and understanding that is great. You can use it as part of your content. Celebrity, I don't think I need to take that one home. Obviously, Air Jordans, that's pretty obvious. Number two, number three, User generated. So this goes to your testimonials. Again, remember those levels? The lowest type of testimonial for conversion is copy, first name, city. Lowest. One up from that, picture. 
copy, first name, city. Up from that, going better, picture, copy, first name, last name, city. And then the best of the best is still going to be video testimonials because people um, can see the, uh, the authentic nature of the person commenting. And you don't want them too scripted, you just want them to be real. Wisdom of the crowd, and this is actually a really unique one because most people don't use it. Airbnb uses it a lot. Um, that uh, MetLife one, I just whizzed by that example. Remember when I said 50,000 representatives? That's wisdom of the crowd. That shows you you've got all these people. People come together because they all know that we're the best and we've got 50,000 of the best. So wisdom of the crowd. So here you see an example saying, how many people are using this? So how could you use this in insurance? If I was intact or something, you could say, now we're, you know, sur surveying, I don't know how many we have, 100,000 satisfied customers in the GTA area alone. That is wisdom of the crowd. So you can use it in copy, you can sprinkle it out very subtle. Um, it can be uh, satisfaction rating, all of those things. You wanna show that there's uh, something there. Now, moving on to wisdom of friends, I love Wisdom of Friends, but it's also the ugliest thing on website. So when all of you are taking the Facebook APIs or feeds and, and dumping them on there where you're like, great design, and then you see this chunky box that says, like this site, your friends like this site, or here are your friends who like this site. It doesn't convert as strong as you think it would, it used to, but um, things like liking stars, sharing back to Facebook, super important. But understanding certain of my friends, that peer pressure thing, it's dwindling. So don't expect to get a lot of traffic, but when you sprinkle all of these together, and then you add in the affordances, you add in the visuals, you add in the benefits before the call to action, always have the call to action up in the, in the header too, you start to really create a high performing story. And I'm using the word story because this is what gets lost. Everything I told you, you can put in different boxes on a page and call it a day and wash your hands. Not going to sell a thing. It's about understanding the difference. There's two spheres, and this is very Google. It's all about micro moments and meta moments. Micro moments are well, things I want to do now that are mostly mobile generated. It's I need to know the claims phone number. I need to know this, X, Y, Z. It's I need to know now moment. Um, I want to go or call or uh, do or buy. Um, is that super important? Well, you see a lot of people geo-targeting, which means I can take Pearson and I can, through technology, map Pearson by latitude and longitude, and then if someone comes in and comes to my site, I can default to travel insurance. Because I know you're at Pearson, well, there's a good chance maybe you're thinking about travel insurance, especially if I have a little billboard or something like that. So how we do those instant moments are all about mobile. Mobile's not so much about storytelling, People are not going to watch the 27 minute video you posted. It's really about the quick hits. So I always list out the first thing when I work with clients is tell me what the top tasks are that your users do. If not, we can help you with that. Tell me what your business objectives are and see where they interact because that's the content we're putting up above the fold and we're going to drive that action. But you can't just have a site of login, claims, uh, buy insurance, sell insurance. Like, it's not going to work either. So that's where you need to mix in meta moments, the storytelling, and storytelling is huge. We use it a lot in the insurance industry because it relates back to that social proof. For Intact, we had a whole campaign on it, on claims, and how, uh, you know, see behind the scenes, that whole feel. And it was really important because it helps people with their purchase decisions. It really gets people to feel this, answer questions. Because honestly, people aren't coming to your site to say, I really want to watch a video. Like, I want, I want to hear a testimonial. They're not doing that. They're coming usually for a task in mind. They're not coming necessarily, they'll come for an action or a task, but they're not coming to say, I really want to interact with your content. But it is your job when you're blocking those things out to mix quick hits, which are the micro moments, top tasks, with the storytelling. Quick hit, storytelling. And blogs, believe it or not, Blogs and expert opinions from brokers are one of the best things you can be putting on your site because it's storytelling and actually gets traffic. So I, yes, you can have a tab that says blogs, guess what, no one's gonna probably click it, but when you have the little blog comment and read more besides certain parts or where the content is related, you're gonna see an all, a big, big conversion rate on that and then add the call to action. 
Meta moments must be planned. So again, the storytelling, it slows them down, it engages them, great for potential customers. Your current customers are probably coming in too, change address, update information, do things like that. But it's also a cross-sell opportunity for you. Storytelling, talking about different things, how they're related. Um, keep it short, keep it sweet, but mix. Bullets, pros, bullets, image, video. You gotta mix it up on the page. So I'm coming back to this guy, this MetLife one. Look, at it, it's really long and scrollable. Never ever do that, because I can run Hotjar. You can only run Hotjar on your own site, so I could never see this, but my guess is, you know, they really tried to help with the affordance and the blocking, but it's really chunked up. But let's diagnose this as an expert, and my people who all stood up for the last ones, you guys are good, um, I might get you up here. But So here you have, big logo, great. I know I'm not the website. They actually got away with something which I thought was almost impossible, which is mixing cartoon characters with images. So very interesting. They got the Snoopy call to action on the right-hand side. We're looking at the center image. So we can see quick calls to action for their primary goals. We've got navigation that uh, is at, on the lower end that is sticking me. It will stay there as I scroll up or down. And then, right away, they're jumping into storytelling. So you've got some links that will help facilitate quick hits. Moving over to the right is how I was scrolling down. You can see how they're mixing quick hits again. Those meta moments, those quick right away. Further down, another quick hit. And then as I scrolled further, storytelling. So they're bringing it back, like you've got to mix it up, speed up, slow down, speed up, because that's how you get people to interact on your site. Your guys aren't coming in for the quick hits, as soon as they see that hit, they're gone, and, and that's amazing. But it's the ones that I, that you may catch, or the current customer, let them know other things you offer that they may not have thought of. You don't have to have the big video, you can do just little squares, you can have a link to your blog. Real people, real stories. Social proof. Different way to present testimonials. Uh, another site that we pulled from you guys looks good. Going back to that chunking thing, the one thing that's missing, so by diagnosing it, credibility, yes, serving 9 to 3rd. Uh, credibility, credibility, showing who you work with, other people's logos gives you credibility. Customer service, one of the number one things task people are looking for and judging you on as a new customer. Good, good, social proof, big ugly block, but that's, that's social proof for you. But Where's the story? Where's the brand? Where is the why am I differentiating coming to you? This is all quick hits, so that's great. But imagine taking some of those blocks out, moving them a little into, so you go per viewport, you create a story to mix meta moments with micro moments with all those things they said, fits law, hits law. Then you go to the next section and do the same. On mobile though, mobile is all about micro moments, okay? Uh, we do adaptive. So moving forward, right now everyone does response. It would take my whole site and it kind of stacks and groups as you go down. People don't necessarily like that. They're not interacting with that. When they're on their mobile phone, they're looking for particular things. Usually your phone number. Make sure your phone number is tappable because nothing is worse than not having a pen and trying to memorize the phone number, going back and then getting the wrong number and coming back again. Tappable phone number, number one thing. Uh, making sure it's user friendly, so I tap it'll launch it if I wanted to send you an email, your hours, all of that, emergency information, especially on mobile, to help people when they need things. Uh, reinforcement with your customer service plan or statement, uh, really great. So we're closing this out, we're coming up to number nine, contextual cross channel. So this is where we're going. So let's assume you've got this great storytelling, you've got your right social proof in there, you've got your testimonials, everything is looking good. But where's the market going? The reason you put it in those blocks is because everybody wants something personal. So just like I told you that story about going to the airport, I realized I saw you know, uh, uh, an ad for travel insurance. I launched my browser, I launched the site, and maybe the company offers seven types of insurance, but it automatically defaults to travel and a message about how I can instantly get activated the reason that is, is because they built it in chunks, and then they started, if you look at my image, I'm showing you kind of three different users. You've got, you know, someone who likes sports, because I, welcome to Google, we can tell a lot by users without them registering or just coming through, you know, a new customer or a current customer. As they're coming in, what's happening on the backend databases is experiences are be being delivered in real time. 
They're being delivered in real time because I know certain things about you and what did we learn? People are lazy. Imagine coming to a page and not having to look for anything. It's like, oh, because I've been searching travel insurance on Google, then I hit your site and all of a sudden it's travel insurance. This must be the perfect website for me. So that's where we're going. In order to get there, you have to do everything I already said first. Don't even bother trying to get fancy if people can't find your basic information. Get cleaned up and then move here. That's why we have the chunk so it works with mobile and we'll start working with new algorithms and CMS, depends on uh, how big your systems are. So, where to start in baby steps? Landing pages. I used to be anti-landing page and landing pages are things that you create that are one-off pages that are meant to do one or two things. Hardcore lead generation, like pure conversion, or touchy-feely in some essence. So the reason why landing pages are great and we see huge problems with people who don't have them, you should never run a Facebook ad or any ad and have people land on your homepage. It's the worst thing to do. You'll see in Hotjar, like we had a bailout on one of my clients who did that. It was like click to donate or click to purchase and it dropped you on the homepage. Didn't work, people bailed. Then we tried dropping, or they tried, dropping them right into the checkout process and that, that got killed. You need the landing page because the landing page helps you finish telling your story. The landing page of one page has every possible best practice. You don't need to go anywhere and it's directly related to where you came from. So if you're speaking at a fair or doing something or however you guys are selling, creating a landing page around it, Google loves. So that's why you'll see in a lot of big sites when we run campaigns, there's a campaign landing page that speaks directly to, we're going for car insurance, we're going for this, we're going for that. We're all about customer service, that's all it's gonna say. So we work together to do those. The studies are pretty amazing. So companies with 10 or plus landing pages generate 55% more leads than companies with five or fewer. That's huge because you're customizing one page to the message of where they came from. In the future, if you have those dynamic websites that I just took you through, you don't need landing pages because it'll fill in the blocks for you. But on average, it doesn't. So what do you do when you don't have a fancy system? You create a landing page. And the landing page is tied to whatever Google ads, whatever you're doing, continue the story and add in those key things. Test a video testimonial. Oh wait, I think I wrote out everything for you. Ah, there it is. Look at how easy, the ultimate landing page. So. I think we are circulating this, so those of you who are taking notes, good effort. You can try. I should have probably said that at the beginning, but I like to see people. Yeah, I know. But now it's imprinted on me. All right. So, landing page. So, this again, I do wireframes. I'm not creative, I don't have Photoshop on, so I design these things and I give, it's like a blueprint, and I give them to the creatives, and the creatives crumple up, throw it over the shoulder, do whatever they want, and then I come back and I make them do it this way. But this basically is a template. Now we can move things around, but I'm gonna explain why they are the way they are, because they've been testing it. We do a lot of A-B testing with Intact and a lot of our clients because it is, which performs better, Twitter or the credibility? Because it may not for you, but you can run a simple A-B test using free software and figure out which does better. So in this case, if you have a landing page, you can do A-B testing on any page, but this is a landing page for a campaign or something you're pushing. It could be a fall newsletter, it could be almost anything. So the first thing you start with is a convergent um, selling prop. So meaning, wherever they came from, continue telling the story. If you're talking about car insurance, don't land and talk about home insurance. You have to, because your people will bounce because they think they're on the wrong page. You have to continue the story. Secondary headline, draw it in, increase scannability. Making sure you have a con uh, those benefits. Look, if you look at my little thing, benefit statement, it could be prose, keep it short, it could be three bullets. Call to action, really pointing, talking. Couple testimonials, all above the fold. I mean, does it look problematic? It's mixing all the things. You need to bring it to life with your colors, your fonts, your images. But the point is, this is a highly converging, uh, convergent, convergent and converting page because it's got all the key pieces. Now, I'd hate for you guys to all go out and copy this because that would be pretty funny. But you need to test it and see what's going on. We see different conversions from sentences. We see different conversions from color, like green over red. But that doesn't mean it's going to work for you because it'll work for someone else. 
because you might do red and then you've got another red here and all of a sudden people's eyes are bouncing everywhere. So what the image looks like or where the video is and all that will start to play because you want an iPad. Tell the story in pieces knowing that people are going to scan that five seconds, eight seconds, they're thinking about something else. So really, really important. A-B testing, just to like break it out a little bit, there's two types of uh, what we call optimization testing. You can do on landing pages or on your home page or a single page. Um, those of you who have massive traffic, which I don't think, not to insult anyone, has enough traffic to do this because you're looking at minimum 20,000 people coming through per month to do multivariant testing because that means you're testing I'm testing a logo. Well, you can see the images. You're testing multiple interfaces against each other. So when someone comes, you get this one, you get this one, you get this one, you get this one, which perform better. You get this one, and it keeps going. It takes too long, and they're very, like, I use this with my US clients. Even some of my Canadian clients don't have enough traffic for statistic relevance. But A-B testing, you do. You pick one thing. Not multiple things, that's multivariant testing. One thing. If you change the color of the button, that is one thing. And you let it run for a couple weeks and you see which gets more clicks. You change a copy, a bullet, or you could do a couple bullet points of uh, benefits, and you compare them. And again, there's free software to do this for you, cloud-based, but you're looking for conversion, and sometimes the conversion is crazy. So experiment with the credibility stuff, experiment with um, testimonials, experiment to say, man, you know, that big Facebook box is taking up a lot of space, Maybe we, let's take it off and put something else there and see if it works. So again, always test, learn, and improve. And the reason you're doing that, wrapping her up, is because people are lazy. And when you watch Hotjar, aka the new Netflix, you will have no idea how lazy people are. So, and the fact that I'm watching it also makes me lazy. So one of those things are spoon feed your users, spoon feed them above the fold, everything they could possibly want in chunks of three, smaller than that, navigation nice and tight, human image, scannability, buttons look like buttons, it's pretty obvious, and keep it moving that way. Because the days of someone actually hunting and looking for information are long gone. Like, just to let you know, we're at eight seconds now for our brains, I think, I wish I could remember, that's a whole other story. I think just four years ago we were at 12. So you can thank mobile for that, you can thank so many things, and it is only going to get worse. So keep it tight, keep it clean, keep it for micro moments on your, um, on your mobiles. So enjoy our journeys, because we're all on the same one, and thank you for coming and hearing me today.